it's honestly one of the biggest upgrades you'll make to your development workflow, which is great because its whole job is to understand your code base, whether it's front end or back end, and it knows exactly what to test because you upload your PRD, it's the end of 2025, and there are more AI coding tools, models, and frameworks than ever. Lovable, cursor, codex, MCB server, spec kit, and countless other loosely connected terms. So in this video, I want to simplify the chaos for you. But instead of reviewing every tool, I'm going to give you something more useful. The actual workflow I use when building with AI, a repeatable framework that works no matter which IDE, agent, tool, or model you prefer. Because while those one prompt vibe coding videos look awesome, they don't really reflect what it takes to build something real. And if you wanna build something useful, something scalable, maybe even profitable, you're gonna to need to stop chasing all the hype and flashing lights because no one magic prompt is gonna get you there. Don't get me wrong, it's definitely possible, but even with AI-assisted coding, you're gonna to have to have some discipline and learn a few frameworks. But the good news is it's easier than ever and I'm gonna show you how. So if you're new to development and don't know where to start, or you've been coding for a while and you just wanna brush up on the latest trends, this video should give you a roadmap. And I'm gonna go over my framework step-by-step step, and I'm also gonna mention the various tools that fit into it, what I think is the best value for money in each case and what I'm currently using. So feel free to jump ahead to whatever section is relevant for you. The framework is very simple, it's straightforward, it makes sense and doesn't rely on a single agent or coding tool. So let's start quickly with the coding agents and IDEs. Should you use Cursor or Windsurf, Claude Code or Codex, Lovable or Replit? To be completely honest, it doesn't really matter. They all more or less do the same exact thing. And they all pretty much use ChatGPT or Claude as an underlying model. So it really all comes down to personal preference and budget. Now, the one thing I will say is you should probably avoid no-code tools like Lovable and Replit. And don't get me wrong, they're great for getting started and even proof of concepts. But once you start editing and customizing your code, you're going to quickly outgrow them and you'd probably be much better off just using an IDE. And for an IDE, you could use Windsurf or Cursor, which are just forks of VS Code with their own coding agent sometimes using their own proprietary models, but generally also just leaning on Claude or ChatGPT. And then the other options, which I prefer, are the CLI tools like Claude Code or Codex. And that's because you're getting the latest model directly from the supplier. And not only that, because you get to use your ChatGPT or Claude subscription to use Codex or Claude Code. And you can use both of them either in a regular terminal window or the command line in an IDE. And they both have their own great VS Code extensions. So these are my preference and they both have their pros and cons, but these are the top of the top. So you can use them in Cursor or in Windsurf, but I say save your money and just use VS Code for free and pay for a better ChatGPT or Claude subscription. For ChatGPT, the $20 subscription is enough to get by with Codex, but for Claude Code to get meaningful work, you gotta start with the $100 Claude Max subscription. Claude Code is my favorite. It's the most mature with the most features, but the most expensive and with the strictest usage limits. So with that being said, the $20 ChatGPT subscription with Codex and VS Code is probably the best bang for your buck, at least for right now. Again, to each his own, they all do more or less the same thing. In my opinion, it matters more about how you use them and the framework I'm gonna show you will work for all of them. But before we get into the framework, I wanna briefly talk about two more subjects, Git and MCP. First, Git. If you already know Git, great, you could skip ahead, but I'm gonna be quick about it. Learn the basics of Git. It's easy and crucial, and once you get the hang of it, you'll save yourself so many headaches. And Git is local on your computer. GitHub is in the cloud with some extra features. Git is essentially version control. It gives you the ability to save your work at different points and even different versions of your work. And in AI coding, I find it so important for the ability to revert back to a previously working version of your code, because no matter what model or tool you're using, it will make mistakes, it will hallucinate. And when that happens, instead of pushing forward, and trying to convince the AI to fix the bug, what you might end up doing is just compounding the problem. So instead of beating a dead horse, jump into your Git time machine, go back to when the code was last working and start fresh. And at that point, you'll be able to give it context of what you learned didn't work and tell it not to do that. And it will just make your life that much better. And by the way, Git is also great for working in teams or in AI coding, spinning up multiple agents like with Git work trees. And there are tons of great Git and GitHub tutorials available online. Oh, and by the way, you don't need to remember the Git command. You could have whatever agent you're working with commit to Git or revert from Git. You could even do it within the UI with buttons. You just need to learn the basics. You need to be comfortable with it. Next, MCP. I talk a lot about MCP on this channel. I use several MCP in my coding setups. They essentially give your agents access to external tools and resources. They're very powerful, but you need to learn how to use them wisely. Meaning you don't need to download every MCP you see. And it's fine if you have a lot of MCPs downloaded, but turn them off when you're not using them. And the reason for this is context engineering, managing your context window. That's the short-term memory of your chat. And MCP servers take up a lot of context. So the more you have turned on, the less room you'll have in your chat for meaningful work. So I suggest turning them on when you need them and turning them off when you're done with them. And while we're on the topic of the context window limitations, let me give you one more tip. Once you finish a feature or you solved a bug and you did a commit, 
end the conversation and start a new one. Don't have ongoing conversations. The longer they go, the dumber and less efficient the agent becomes. And you'll end up just creating more bugs and hitting your usage limits faster. So when you have a natural break, stop the conversation and start a new one. Okay, great. Now let's get into the framework itself. Planning is the number one most important step before building anything. And I will die on this hill. I don't care how many videos you saw where someone gave a one-line prompt to an AI tool and it magically built something that looked like a functioning prototype. Cool story, bro. I love the demo, but those people definitely aren't using that thing daily and they're definitely not serving it to users. If you want to build something scalable, you need to plan. And one prompt is not enough context for any AI to understand what your long-term goals are, your constraints, or what the product is supposed to be. So this all comes down to a PRD, a product requirements document. I've already made a full video on how I write out PRDs. I'll link to it above. I use AI with custom instructions to help me flesh out my ideas, but the bottom line is simple. If it's a new product or even just a feature for an existing product, plan it out. Give the AI all the context upfront by making a PRD. And I'm not talking about the technologies. I'm not talking about how. I'm talking about the why, the what, and most importantly, the who. Who are you building this for? And it will help you with every single step that comes after this because in product development, the PRD is your single source of truth. So in that video I mentioned, I go back and forth with Claude. And once I think it's good enough, I download it as a markdown file and then I add it as the first file of my project. Okay, so the PRD is done. The next step is documentation. And I'm 99% sure you're not gonna be reinventing the wheel here. You're gonna be building with other people's libraries, SDKs, APIs, whatever. And all of these come with documentation on how to use them. The thing is documentation changes often. So we wanna make sure that the coding agent we're using is working with the latest, most up-to-date information possible. And it's better to get it ahead of time before it starts working. So one of the first things I do when I start building is I go out and I grab the documentation and I'll go to the website or I'll go to GitHub, I'll use Git ingest. And I'll create a documentation folder in my project and then I'll copy and paste the documentation and put it in there. And yes, most agents now have the ability to search the web. So the AI can technically go and search for documentation, but in my opinion, it often makes mistakes mistakes and it's not really good use of your context. So again, I think it's better to go out and get it yourself. Then you know that your agent has the latest documentation at its fingertips. And there's also this great MCP server called Context7 that can go out and fetch documentation. And I always add this one because when the agent needs to, it's able to go out and find the documentation that it's missing. And I actually already did a video on that. I'll link to that one above as well. Okay, so once you have your PRD and your documentation, the next step is spec-driven development. There are a bunch of tools and frameworks for this. BMAD, OpenSpec, Taskmaster, SpecKit, what they do is they take the PRD and makes it actionable for your AI. And this is crucial for a few reasons. First of all, we already talked about the limitation of the context window. And when you're building things with the AI, it consumes way more context than a normal chat GPT conversation. So you want short and focused conversations. So that means breaking your work into multiple tasks, multiple chats, and ending conversations once a task is done. So these spec-driven tools help break your PRD into actionable chunks and into an order that makes sense. They also help you answer architecture questions, design questions, and then they generate a to-do list which the AI could follow one step at a time. It's honestly one of the biggest upgrades you'll make to your development workflow. I've already done a few videos on Kiro and on SpecKit. So basically, once you have your project open, you take your PRD and you launch your spec-driven development framework. And depending on how detailed your PRD is, it may ask you more questions, and then it will create the files that your agent can look at and work on task by task, even with some testing built in, which is great. So if you're just getting started and this is a new project, I recommend using SpecKit. But if you're adding a feature to an existing project or code base, I recommend OpenSpec because it's better at understanding where you are and where you need to go. I also know a lot of people love the BMAD method as well. The world is your oyster, choose whatever floats your boat, I don't care. Okay, so at this point you have your PRD, you have your documentation, hopefully you have Git initialized in your project, you probably have some MCP servers installed, and you should have your spec-driven development task lists ready. So now it's time to actually get to work to start implementing. And it's very simple, you do one task at a time. So it works like this, you open a new chat and you tell your agent, implement task one or whatever task you're on. It might ask you for permission, you let it make changes, and you might not understand exactly what it's doing, but pay attention because you still might see it make mistakes. And then eventually it's gonna tell you that it's done. So now you test and testing is insanely important because AI is great at writing code, but it's not always so great at knowing that the code actually works. It will confidently tell you that everything is perfect even when it's not. So when it finishes a task, check it yourself. And sometimes testing is as simple as running the code and seeing what happens. Does it compile? Does it crash? Does the UI look right? Does it actually do the thing it's supposed to do? And if you don't know what should work or what to test, ask the AI, what should you test? And once you think you're confident that it's done, you commit that version of the code to Git, you start a new chat, and you go to the next task. Implement task 002 or whatever. And then when that's done, you check again. And that's the process. And remember, code breaks other code. So even if something doesn't look related, 
Test it anyways. So each time you're going to end up testing more and more things. And yes, it could feel tedious. But the good news is a lot of these frameworks actually write tests for the tasks that they're working on and they run the tests themselves. And you can also prompt the agent you're working with to run tests. And even better, there are plenty of tools and MCPs out there for testing. I've actually done a few videos on Playwright and Chrome DevTools, but another testing MCP that I've been using a lot lately is TestBright, which is great because its whole job is to understand your code base, whether it's front end or back end, and it knows exactly what to test because you upload your PRD, it evaluates it, and it writes tests based on that. It's a great MCP server. They are the sponsor of this video, and I'll drop a link to them below. Now, you might not want to run tests for every task, and I get that, but if you delay testing to the end of the project, or between several tasks, when they break, and they will, it will be much harder to figure out what broke when. So like committing to Git, the more often you test, the better. And don't be afraid to revert to your last working version. That's why Git is so important. The way I see it, commit often, test often, and revert when needed. You implement one task, you test it, you commit it, you move on to the next one. When you're done with a task, start a new chat, rinse and repeat. That's my framework. It's simple, it's repeatable, and it works with any tool, any agent, any IDE, and it will remain relevant for the foreseeable future. And it's not so different from traditional coding. The difference is that we're using it now to guide agents because building scalable projects with AI is not a one prompt thing and it's not a one hour thing. It's an iterative process. You try things, you break things, you fix things, and you learn as you go. And the good news is it gets easier every week. This is literally the worst it's ever going to be. I hope you found this video helpful. If you want a deeper dive into any of these steps, drop a comment below. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. It really helps me grow. Thank you guys for watching. Happy coding and have a great day.